Welcome to Shaggy Shane's 2018 Prediction Show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Kansas City Chiefs freaks worldwide of all ages, we are here Sunday evening, Labor Day, to let you know what's going on with the Kansas City Chiefs and our predictions and our talks of everything that's going on with the team and how we feel about it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, joining me this evening to my left is none other than Clay Windler from Red Tribe Cinema. Yes, you know Clay. You love Clay. You all check out his work. He has the fastest gift in the West. He's the man on Twitter on game day giving you that instant update, that instant view, that instant video of what's going on, the magic or the tragedy that is going on on the field. I called a hold of, a hold of Clay about 12 years ago when he when we were both at Festivus for Chiefs Coalition. Oh, yeah. We both worked for Warpaint Illustrated for some time. Clay took his talents to a new level and worked seven years at SB Nation for Vox Media. He is the man that covers the Chiefs on Red Tribe Cinema. Clay, how in the hell are you? I'm really good. We got one week until the season opener. I got no idea what's going to happen. I'm really, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you're as excited as I am and you're like, like the excitement I feel, it's like coming out of you. So that's how excited I am. Hell yeah, buddy. It's a damn good time to be Kansas City Chiefs fan. We've waited a long time. We waited 34 years for the Kansas City Chiefs to draft a quarterback in the first round, and that quarterback that was drafted was Patrick Mahomes. We've waited a whole entire year for the guy to get on the field to play. In 2018, it's all about number 15, ladies and gentlemen. Let me say that one more time. In 2018, it's all about number 15. Hell yes! All right, Clay, there's been some moves made in the last 24 hours, probably about 28 hours, that brought the Chiefs down to the 53-man roster. Uh, a move and a couple of moves were made today to, to make everything official. What do you think about Ron Parker being brought back? There's been some injury with Daniel Swartz, and he's going to miss the first month of the season with a knee injury. Eric Berry has missed for the second year in a row. Another preseason, another preseason. Eric Berry missed preseason last year. He's missed preseason this year. What do you think about bringing Ron Parker back to the team? Well, the Chiefs were basically desperate, I think, for help in the secondary. Uh, so you have a guy who's played in Bob Sutton's system, uh, is a veteran, might have something left in the tank, and they got him for cheap. So that's basically as good as you could hope to find in, you know, after cutdowns. Right. So, you know, better than what they had on the roster for sure. Right. And uh, like I said, he fit, he went with the he went to, the Chiefs released him when they drafted Armani Watts. They felt Daniel Sorensen was going to be an adequate player to mix with Armani Watts and Eric Berry, but Sorensen hurt his knee. Armani Watts has had some uh, health issues at Texas A&M, which is the reason why he slipped to the fourth round of the draft. But bringing in Ron Parker like Clay and I alluded to, he does know the scheme, he knows the division, he knows he knows the locker room, so it's not really much of a shock to have him come back. It's a welcoming, it's it's good to have him to come back because he does know the scheme. Uh, what do you think about Cam Irving getting that left guard position? You know, last year when they picked him up, a lot of people were just curious about, about who he even was because a lot of people did, didn't know him from like Florida State. I, I knew he had been a pretty good player at Florida State, but then he was just terrible in Cleveland. And last year he didn't show much. A lot of people were surprised that he was penciled in as the starter going into preseason. Didn't look real good in preseason. <laughs> so I got to say, honestly, I'm, I'm not a fan of the Chiefs sticking with him at that position. but. You know, I guess you've got to have some faith that Andy Reid knows what he's doing and things are going to get better back there. I, uh, what concerned me was I thought Parker Erringer was their best, le best left guard. Uh, he was running seconds when we went up there the first week of camp, but he was playing backup right tackle Parker Erringer, as I mentioned. Now they worked him in a trade with Charvarius Ward, a cornerback uh, out of Middle Tennessee State. He was an undrafted rookie free agent with the Dallas Cowboys. In, in training camp, he played really, really well, and the Cowboys wanted to 
solid offensive guard. They wanted, they valued Parker Erringer. They thought, you know, let's make this deal. The Chiefs valued Charvarius Ward out of Middle Tennessee State. Like I said, he's an undrafted rookie free agent who has shown a lot of talent, who shot shown a lot of physical attributes with the Cowboys in training camp and in preseason. Yeah, he was. Uh, I went to search a lot of the Cowboys news talk this afternoon and saw what they were saying about him before the trade. They like his physicalness. He's 6'1", 201. He wasn't afraid to get in the faces of the Cowboys wide receivers and make plays against Dak Prescott. Uh, I didn't like losing Parker Erringer, but if this kid, Charvarius Ward, can be a starter or at least work in some nickel and dime situations come week four or five, I like that trade. What do you think? You know, the Chiefs, they, they dumped a, a known broken quantity in David Amberson and picked right. up a guy who is a lot younger, probably has you know, more talent at this stage in their careers. And has you know more room to grow. Right. So you know it's a it's a it's a deal that has a basically no risk. Right. At this point, right. I mean they, they need secondary help and and they found it in Ron Parker. They got a veteran and they got a young guy. Right. So right. you gotta like it. Excellent. All right, Eric Berry has like I said he's missed the last two preseason preseasons with the Chiefs. We didn't think much of it last year when he had a sore heel. First game of the season, he was playing great. The Patriots, on their in the set third quarter, went for it in fourth and inches. He was, the Patriots were stopped. A lot of it was because of Eric Berry clogged the hole and he was making plays. But with three minutes left in the first game of the season, Eric Berry suffered his, his ACL tear. Um, he's came back. He's worked out all offseason. We saw him in training camp, but for the second year in a row, Eric Berry has missed the preseason, the entire preseason with a sore heel. Um, are you concerned about this? Because we're going into week one. We don't know if Eric Berry is going to play. Speaking of which, which brings us to another point, the Chiefs picked up Justin Lucas from the Miami Dolphins and with Ron Parker. Now with Armani Watts, a fourth-round draft pick at a Texas A&M. What is your concerns about the safety position with Eric Berry's injury? Well, you, you really hope with Eric Berry that they're just being overly cautious because at this point the last thing they need is to have is to not have Eric Berry out there and just basically be stuck with, with almost over the hill Ron Parker and a bunch of unknowns. So you really hope that they're being overly cautious, but just because of his injury history, I mean, and the fact that he had, he had you know, cancer, uh, you, you have to wonder if he's going to be anything close to what he was the last time we saw him on the field. If, if he is, you feel a lot better about the defense because you feel like with Eric Berry and with Kendall Fuller, you can at least maybe hold down one side of the field. If you don't have that, you just feel like, like it's, it's a totally uncertain situation back there. So they need him to be healthy, obviously. Right, right, definitely. We definitely need Eric Berry back, baby. Come on, buddy. Rest that heel. Get it on some ice. We're going to need you next week. The Phillip Rivers is going to be coming strong because Phillip Rivers was 0-6 against the Kansas City Chiefs when Marcus Peters was the cornerback. I'm not going to bring up the Marcus Peters situation because we have moved forward. But Phillip Rivers was 0-6 against the Kansas City Chiefs when Eric Marcus Peters was their Starting corner, but he's gone, and we move past it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get on to other news. The Chiefs just today signed Ike Boitzker out of University of Iowa. He played with the Buffalo Bills in preseason. He suffered an Achilles injury. Uh, before senior season started at Iowa, he would have been a top draft pick at Iowa. He plays guard and tackle. He played guard with the Buffalo Bills in preseason. He's 6'6", 315 pounds, so he's a big body. If he can come back and add anything to the offensive line, you know, that'd be great. Brett Beach scooped it out and picked him up. What do you think about this signing? You got anything on this kid? Well, to me, when, when the Chiefs traded Parker Erringer, and they, they were saying they felt that they could afford to do that to pick up this Charvarius Ward. Right. That means they, they felt pretty good about about 
this new offensive lineman. Right. So you you would think if 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 they if they didn't have confidence in in their evaluation of this guy, then they would have held on to Parker Erringer. But right. they didn't do that. So you in a, in an ideal world, he could be the next Parker Erringer, and maybe maybe you know if Cam Irving continues to not play well at left guard, maybe he could be that guy. He's definitely somebody to watch. He's a big body, and like I said, he would have been a high draft pick if he didn't get hurt in Iowa. He's got a fellow Iowa Hawkeye that we're going to talk about that made the team. Number 56, wearing that number 56 jersey proudly. Let's jump back to the defensive middle linebacker, Ben Neiman. If we look here, take a gander at this Chiefs uh, depth chart here on the defense, we see Ben Neiman as the Reggie Raglan's backup. What do you think about the unheralded story of Ben Neiman and just overall him making the team? Well, you know, I told you tonight when I came over, I, I said, I said, I think by the end of the year, Ben Neiman, he might just take Reggie, Reggie Raglan's job. Wow! Uh, you know, he showed he showed incredible instincts <laughs> uh, for a guy who who had you know never played in the NFL before in preseason, and and the guy the, he's not the biggest linebacker in the world, but he runs a four six. Right. Uh, I mean, the guy could could probably play safety as fast as he is, as as good as he looked on that interception he had True. in preseason. True. So I think I think the Chiefs might just really have something here with Ben Neiman. Good point, good point. I agree with that. Ben Neiman is showing a lot of potential. Uh, man, if he could come in and somehow push Ragley Raglan out of the way, that'd be a story in itself, and it would expand the Ben Neiman phenomenon. But continuing, let's talk about this wide receiver situation. I was thrilled when the Chiefs drafted Che Chesson out of Michigan. Lance Twidwell, our buddy who was supposed to be here tonight but couldn't make it because of Casey Beard commitments, uh, said at our, our draft report that Jay Chesson will make the team. <clears throat> he didn't make the team. Jay Chesson was cut yesterday. Byron Pringle beat him out. Byron Pringle is a fast wide receiver with good size and good speed out of Kansas State. He was an undrafted rookie free agent that the Chiefs picked up. He looked good in preseason or in training camp. He looked really good during the games. He caught a two-point conversion against the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, on his 45-yard pass from Matt McGloin in the third quarter Thursday night, he was about to bust away from the secondary. Ah! Did the old grab back to his booty, pulled his hamstring, and fell down. And right now he's on the injured reserve, uh, injured list, where he can come back when he's healthy. What do you think about Byron Pringle beating out of J.U. Chesson? Well, you know, last preseason, J.U. Chesson looked really, really good. Like, it was almost like he had some kind of chemistry going on with Patrick Mahomes. This preseason, Byron Pringle looked even better than J.U. Chesson did last preseason. And, you know, with J.U. Chesson not really doing anything last year during the regular season, the Chiefs basically went with with a guy who was one year younger and had basically the same resume. So the Chiefs have done a really, really good job of stacking their roster with wide receiver talent, and they basically have a log jam at the position now. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out once, uh, once Pringle gets back to health. Okay, so Shane, now i got a few questions for you. What's up, buddy? So we talked about... Uh, how Ben Neiman, you know, at least in my opinion, might take Reggie Raglan's job. What do you think about Tano Passanio taking D Ford's job by the end of the year? I think Tano Passanio has an excellent chance of taking D Ford's position. Uh, he's got a better chance than Ben Neiman taking over Raglan, but Tano Passanio is a freak. He's 6'7, 280, probably 2% body fat. He's a speed rusher, can get off the end, had a monster sack, which was called back for a foul, which was crap against the Bears. That was a legal sack. He nailed the quarterback, and the refs wanted to take it off of it. D Ford, uh, gosh dang it, we've been waiting for him to do something. He, D Ford has seven career sacks against the uh, San Diego Los Angeles Chargers, so maybe he'll have, D Ford will have six sacks the next week against the Chargers and not do anything the rest of the season uh, because that seems to be D Ford's forte if you look up his stats against the Chargers. But um, I think Tonto Passanio has got an excellent chance of taking over for D Ford. Just because D Ford, he's not very good against the run. 
He's not very physical. He's a speed rusher that uh, offensive tackles are able to push him out of the way, and opposing quarterbacks are able to step up in the pocket and make plays. Uh, last year he suffered a back injury, which really hurt the defense. The Chiefs had to put in Zombo, who's not on the team right now, thank God. But I really like Tano Passanio's size. I really like his speed. I don't like him in coverage. I saw him out at training camp in zone coverage and have a six foot seven, uh, 285 pound uh, outside linebacker, 25 yards down the field, trying to keep up with an athletic tight end. Looked atrocious. We got to keep Tano Passanio on the up front, gaining, running towards a quarterback. He ideally coming out of Villanova, when you looked at him as a project, he was great as a defensive end in a 4 3. But since the Chiefs were running 3 4 as an outside linebacker, so I like him long term. But let's keep him running, rushing after the passer. Okay. Now I want to hear. So obviously we know the Chiefs defense has had a lot of problems in preseason. Yep. So most people are predicting they're not going to have a very good defense. But let's just say a miracle happens and somehow they're able to field a winning defense this year. If they're going to do that, some players are going to need to step up. So who are your top three players that have to step up in 2018 for the Chiefs to field a winning defense? Justin Houston has got to return to form to 2014. Eric Berry has got to play. Uh, I'm not going to say the 2016 Eric Berry because that was incredible. Eric Berry won two games for us on the road against the Falcons and against the Carolina Panthers that gave the Chiefs a 12-4 record and gave them a bye. Eric Berry made that difference. Justin Houston, Eric Berry's got to be healthy. The second cornerback, we don't know who is it going to be. David Amerson was cut. Is it going to be Steve Nelson next week opposite of Kendall Fuller? Is it going to be, uh, is it going to be uh, Orlando Scandrick? Uh, who is it going to be in this uh, cornerback situation going into next week's game? Uh, but Eric Berry, Justin Houston, and Derek Nottie have to be solid. But I also want to throw in the middle linebackers have to be solid against the run because the Chiefs have to force opponents to, to, to pass the ball on third and long. So, I'm, like I said, I'm going to go with Justin Houston, Eric Berry, and let's go with both middle linebackers. Got to say, I think, I think if Justin Houston can return to not necessarily his 2014 form because we'll probably never see that Justin Houston again. Right. But if he can get to like 80% of that and if Tato... Passanio can, yeah, it's hard to say. <clears throat> if he can break out and get eight, nine sacks, wow. the, the Chiefs could have like enough of a pass rush, especially with Chris Jones, right. that they can cover up you know, some of their warts in the secondary. Right. So, agree on Houston. Right, right, definitely, definitely. I just feel that uh, Justin Houston, when he had Frank Zombo on the opposite of his playing 3-4 defense, was ineffective. With D4, Justin Houston was better. With Tom Bahali in his prime, Justin Houston was a beast. If you could put Tano Passanio on the outside and playing at a high level, we can only dream what that can mean for this defense. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to uh, the what our offense is going to be. For the first time in uh, since I was 14, 15, 16, and 17 years old, we're going to be run by a quarterback that we drafted in the first round, Patrick Mahomes. Uh, I'm pretty excited about Patrick Mahomes, and I'm sure Clay Windler is as well. Would you say you are? I'm, I'm more excited than I've been, <laughs> ironically, since the Chiefs Check trade, out Red trade, trade, trade for Matt Castle. But, <laughs> right. But, but, you know, lesson learned. So. Right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the kid's a winner. He's got a lot of raw athletic ability that he harnessed and learned and set and for one season and learned this offense. Uh, quite frankly, I know we were in the minority who wanted him to play last year uh, when the Chiefs started to struggle, but he's ready to take this team to the next step. Ten years ago, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, the fan base was split because the Packers wanted to go with their first-round draft pick three years earlier, Aaron Rodgers out of Cal. The fan base was split because they had to say goodbye to Brett Favre. Chiefs Kingdom doesn't know what it's like to have a truly great quarterback. A lot of Chiefs fans were upset when they were letting go of Alex Smith. And during Patrick Mahomes' struggles some this preseason, we saw a lot of Alex Smith fans come out of the woodwork. Uh, this isn't Green Bay. 
but we do understand that there are some fans that are upset that they didn't have Alex Smith another year. Uh, I'd like to say too bad because uh, this is Patrick Mahomes time, baby. And I'm pretty excited about what this kid can deliver. But back to the Green Bay Packers in 2008, when they were split, Aaron Rodgers took over that team, and they finished 6-10. and 10. Aaron Rodgers' first season, they were 6-10. and 10. Many Packers fans were upset. They said, see, we shouldn't have got rid of Brett Favre. He's taking the Jets, and they're going 11-5 and five and missing the playoffs. They were pissed. But Aaron Rodgers, in his second season as a starter, took the Packers to the wild card. They lost to the Arizona Cardinals in a shootout, 51-45. to And Aaron Rodgers' third year as a starter, he was a Super Bowl champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the Patrick Mahomes era is just beginning. Uh, I'm not going to say he's gonna, Patrick Mahomes is going to go 6-10. We will get to our prediction. But I'm saying, let's let the future franchise, let's let the franchise quarterback of now, Patrick Mahomes, take that step. Do you have anything you want to add to that, Clay? Well, you know, you gave the perfect example about, you know, the, the growing pains that, that the Chiefs might have to go through with a young quarterback. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is going to the Hall of Fame, right. and he went 6-10 and 10 his first season, and he's obviously not the first first year starter. And think of the heat that he had to deal with. The heat, exactly. you're not far, you're not That's far, right. you went 6-10. and 10. The thing is, though, the Packers probably should have started him even earlier than that, because, I mean, when Favre was their starter while Rodgers was on the roster, I mean, they weren't winning Super Bowls. They went to the NFC Championship game in 07, and Brett Favre threw that interception against the Giants. Yeah. But in 5-6, and six, he did, Brett Favre wasn't, it was still struggling. It did warrant that, it wasn't a surprise that they did draft him, but with Brett Favre going to the NFC Championship game and, and being Brett Favre, there was a lot of fans upset, and they were pissed. They were pissed that they freaking... Brand Brett, they forced him to retire. And then, of course, Brett Favre comes back and says, I don't want to retire, I want to play. So we stand in there in training camp. It's a freaking zoo 10 years ago in Green Bay. So then they decide, well, we're going to trade you to the Jets. And, of course, like I said, Aaron Rodgers was 6-10 and 10 his first year. But then the next year on became the greatest quarterback in this generation. So uh, with that being said, let's get to our Kansas City Chiefs. 2018 predictions. Clay, you're my guest. Lance Whittle was supposed to join us. He can't be here tonight. So we don't know what his prediction is going to be. He's taking care of Casey Beard commitments. He couldn't be here. He backed out at the last second. I understand that. It takes a lot of work to keep the beard looking good. I use Casey Beard Company. That's why it looks so damn good. But let's get with our predictions. You are my guest here, Clay. What is your prediction for the Kansas City Chiefs for the 2018 season? Well, they've got a tough schedule. It's really tough at the beginning. They've got a shaky defense. They've got a young quarterback. So I'm going to say the Chiefs are probably going to miss the playoffs this year. But I think they're going to start poorly. They're, they're going to start 2-6. and six, And people are, are going to be upset. Uh, How many Alex fans are going to be crying? All of them. What will they be saying? <laughs> Whatever they want to say, and it won't, and it won't make any difference because because you, you know Alex Smith is is he's this piece of paper. That's Alex Smith. Uh, but they're going to start two and six. Okay. But they're going to finish. They're going to finish five and three. Second half of the season, Mahomes is going to get better. The young players on defense are going to step up, and there's going to be. There's going to be some hope going into next season, and that's that's all you can ask for because when you have you know a quarterback you drafted and you're trying to build something on defense, it's a process. I mean, this Chiefs fans are going to have to accept that this is not going to be like any other team. This is not going to be a quick fix like it was when we traded for Castle or traded for Alex. They're, they're trying to build something long-term here. So that's how you have to look at it. So, so if they struggle early on, it, it, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Right. So, yeah, so, but my official prediction is 7-9 and, and finishing strong is how it's going to go. 
Clay Wheeler has the 2018 Kansas City Chiefs 7-9. And with the fans in the heat, with your prediction coming down on Patrick Mahomes, if they're bombing Red Tribe Cinema saying, See, I told you you suck. We should have kept Alex. What is your response to that? I'm just going to block him. <laughs> okay. Um, or, <laughs> okay. We're not going to tolerate that kind of talk. All right. Sorry. And, uh... How many touchdowns will Patrick Mahomes to interceptions for well, your prediction? You know, Alex Smith threw, what, 26 touchdowns last year? Uh, yes, and five or six interceptions. Chiefs, Chiefs added Sammy Watkins. Uh, Demarcus Robinson is coming into his own. I think, I think 26 touchdowns is the, is the floor for Patrick Mahomes this year. So I will go out on a limb and say he will break – the single season uh, touchdown record for a Chiefs quarterback, which is twenty-seven. No, it's it's uh, Len Dawson. Did, didn't Len, Len Dawson threw like thirty-one touchdowns <laughs> I don't know. one year? Did, I, okay, Mahomes is going to throw thirty-two touchdowns. Thirty-two touchdowns. Thirty-two Patrick touch Mahomes. Thirty-two touchdowns. Fourteen fourteen interceptions that will cause Chiefs Twitter and Facebook to melt down. But who cares? Because doesn't matter. But. Yeah, 32 and 14. 32 and 14, and do you like the future? Do you like the next 12 or 15 years with Patrick Mahomes? Do you like the rise of Mahomes? No pun intended. Well, <laughs> I, I, we're going to find out. Uh, but if he throws 32 touchdowns this year. And we're 7 and 9. And we're 7 and 9, with Andy Reid as his head coach and, uh, and Veach Season as his GM, uh, you got to like the. The uh, future uh, upswing that that could probably take place if that's his first year in the NFL. Right, right, right. And the Chiefs do free up if Justin Houston doesn't live up to the his potential. The Chiefs can get out of the fat part of his check after this year. If the Chiefs say goodbye to Justin Houston and D Ford next March, that frees up twenty eight million dollars of cap space. And their two their last two second round draft picks, Breland Speaks and Tano Passanio go from being behind him on the depth chart to number one. The Chiefs have two second round draft picks in next year's draft. All right, now it's time for Shaggy Shane's 2018 Kansas City Chiefs prediction. My prediction for the Kansas City Chiefs in the 2018 season is to be 11 and five. That's 11 wins and five losses. AFC Western Division champions, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, the reason why I say that, I understand Clay Wheeler and I understand the points he brings, and then there's a lot of truth to it. Young quarterbacks, uh, especially young stud quarterbacks like uh, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre, they all struggle early. They come out and they struggle a little bit early. But Andy Reid and his ten, whole entire tenure as a head coach, he has only been under 500 twice. His first season as a starter and not, as a head coach in 1999 with rookie quarterback Donovan McNabb, he went 5-11. In his final year with the Philadelphia Eagles, Andy Reid was, I think, 5-11 or 4-12 again. He, they ran him out. But I just feel that Andy Reid will put Patrick Mahomes and the entire team in a situation to be successful, to come out and win, win those games that we're concerned with. I honestly like, I'm concerned about the Steelers game. Uh, the Chiefs have taken care of the Chargers. The Chargers next week's game in Los Angeles, that stadium only holds 28,000, and that's a little soccer hut. So there's probably going to be about 10,000 Chiefs fans there making noise. i like the Chiefs to win next Sunday. I think that uh, I think that they will start off, I think they will be 3-2 and two after five games, but they will finish 11-5, and five, win the division, and make it to the playoffs. This is just the beginning. Just the beginning of the rise of Mahomes. You saw the story with Red Tribe Cinema. You saw it with Total Read Ball. Things are going to happen in Kansas City. Is it too much pressure to put 11 and 5 on Patrick Mahomes back? I don't think so. The kids got the kids got it here, and the kids got it here. He's been around pro sports his whole life. Uh, he's a so. winner. He's a winner who who's accustomed to making mistakes. And as soon as those mistakes are made, he puts them in the back. He puts them away and learns from it. Okay, so now you asked me about my prediction for Mahomes' 
uh, numbers this year. Right. I said he was going to break Len Dawson's uh, single season franchise record for touchdowns. What's your prediction? Mahomes. You're right. We just looked yeah. it up. Lynn Dawson had 30 touchdowns. 30 touchdowns. In 1964. Uh, I think Patrick Mahomes will break that record. He will throw 38 touchdowns and 16 interceptions. He will pass for 4,852 yards. It's going to be an exciting time to be a Kansas City Chiefs fan. He's going to break he's going to break those records and it's going to be many records he's going to break. All right, with that being said, Clay, let's answer some of these fans' questions. And Let's followers that wanted to uh, wanted to know about the team. First off, we'll start with the Brit Chief. My good buddy, the Brit Chief. He's six hours ahead of us. You know him. You love him. Check him out on YouTube. He's uh, always breaking it down with this cup of tea. Hey, I got to have fun with him. He has fun with me. Uh, we love you, Brit Chief. Get back to America. Let's hang again, buddy. You said you're going to be here in three or four years when you save up enough money. Just save up enough money, dude. Just charge it. Just get a credit card. How's credit in Britain? All right, dude. Here's uh, Brad Simcott's Brett Chiefs question. With the Chiefs moving Kendall Fuller outside, who do you like the Chiefs to move in the slot? Well, if you look right here at the depth chart, ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, the starting corner is Kendall Fuller. His backup is six-round draft pick out of Central Arkansas, Tremont Smith. Starting left corner, Steven Nelson. His backup is Orlando Skandrick. So I'm going to go with Orlando Skandrick right now as a slot. He was the slot corner with Dallas. He is going into his 11th season in the National Football League. Uh, who do you like as a slot corner? Well, you know, I got to say, I don't think you can play Steven Nelson outside. I think he has to be the slot corner. And he's played there in the past from Chiefs. So I think he's going to end up being the slot corner. But, you know, if you watch Bob Sutton's defense over the past five years, I mean, he moves his corners around a lot. So, might not really matter in the end. All right, and our good friend and major awesome guy, Billy Hodge, has got a question. What do you think about the Chiefs? What do you think they'll do with the remaining cap space? Uh, when we look at the cap space, ladies and gentlemen, you know, there's, I don't know if any moves specifically is going to happen. The Chiefs, I talked about all along, could uh, save $1.7 million in cap space by releasing Chris Conley. He made the team over Jay Chesson, who I felt was a cheaper option, but the Chiefs obviously believe in Chris Conley. Uh, I don't know. Like I said earlier, the Chiefs free up next year by if they release Justin Houston or D Ford. But pertaining to this season, uh, I don't know if, if they're going to make any moves uh, concerning their cap space. What do you think, Lee? I think they will probably hold on to that cap space just in case something happens during the year. Because right. you never know who's going to get hurt. All right. And our awesome buddy, uh, Tim Vanderpool, he's the freaking monster tailgater in Lot D. Man, I love the guy. He always makes you feel welcome. He's always there for a good time. Him and Tim Warman. Freaking always got good questions. We're always, I got good food and good beer. Hang out, come join us a lot, D. Uh, he's wanted to know our predictions, which we gave. And the what what three games or what games give, what do you think games will give us the most heartache? What is the most heartache game for you, uh, Clegg? Go on looking at the schedule. Well, what games will give us well, the most heartache? Well, let's pull out the schedule real quick. Okay. Uh, well, the first game I think that is going to be cause of some heartache. Treatment. I think the season opener is not going to go how people want. Uh, it's going to be tough facing Philip Rivers uh, with the state of the defense right now. I'm sure there's going to be some uh, some nervous uh, butterflies in the stomach for Patrick Mahomes. So week one is going to be a letdown. Then I think when the Jacksonville Jaguars come into town, week five, another really really tough defense. Chiefs are going to be maybe like two and three going into that game. They're going to need to win. Jaguars might come in, and that defense might just be too much. And, you know, you never like to lose a game at home. And then the last game that could really be some heartache is when they go to Los Angeles to Mexico. play. Or they go to Mexico to play, uh, you know, Marcus Peters and the Rams. And that's going to be, that's going to be a... a a shootout for sure, and I think what's going to happen is it's going to be it's going to go out of the, go out of the wire, and the Chiefs aren't going to have quite enough firepower to get it done, and that might be one of those games that that people look back on as oh if they won that they might have made the playoffs, but just didn't quite have enough. Well, you got up seven and nine, so you got a lot of heartache games. Um, I think the Steelers game at Pittsburgh is going to be a heartache game. Uh, I think the home opener against the 
49ers will win, but that's going to be a freaking heartache game that we're going to win. I know it's, you can't really say heartache, but that's going to be stressful because Jimmy Garoppolo and that defense is good with San Francisco. But I think heartache for losses, uh, Pittsburgh, second game, and uh, – the uh, I can't see three games that are heartaches. I can just only see the Steelers because I think if the Chiefs stay healthy, and that means with Eric Berry, Justin Houston, the only game that I see on the schedule that's a true heartache game is Week Two at Pittsburgh against Big Ben in the freaking terrible towel. All right, and our last question from our good fan and good follower, awesome guy that I will see at the home opener. We will see Mike Wake Mike Wakefield. Uh, he wants to know about Justin Lucas. The safety we just got from Miami, and it's a two-part question. We'll answer the Justin Lucas uh, safety from Miami that we just got to the team. Uh, he adds depth. He's young. He's, he's very athletic. Uh, we're not sure if he's going to go into the mix on the strong side or the free side, if he's going to line up a nickel or, or how they're going to use him. Right now, right now, the jury's still out on Justin Lucas. Uh, I like the fact that the Chiefs, Brett Veach, was aggressive in getting Justin Lucas as well as uh, – Jartavius or Chart various Ward, uh, so I liked uh, I liked the fact that he did have depth. And the last part with a uh, Mike Wakefield's question is: Will Red Tribe Cinema do another video midseason? Uh, midseason. It depends on how things go. Uh, if the Chiefs are looking good and Patrick Mahomes <laughs> is slinging the ball around, then I you know I might just get crazy. <laughs> but but if things are not going well, then you might just might, might want to just kind of hold it back till the end of the year. So just we'll see how it goes. Uh, what's it like? What's it like? Since uh, you know you've you've taken your talents, and I want to expand on this before we go. What's that like? Uh, do you feel critical? Do you feel like when you're making videos, do you think this will make fans mad? This will make this fan mad? Certain fans will like this, or do you make videos to your own liking? I, I just I just do I just make things that I would want to see, and if somebody else likes them, then that makes me happy. Right. So if if it pisses somebody off, <laughs> that probably makes me happy too. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything. Right. So it, he calls like I see is that he's 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 a big Chiefs fan. People is this the biggest critic. To Clay Wheeler, say you're not a Chiefs fan. This dude lives and freaking dies Chiefs football. If I say, hey, Clay, you got a highlight of Frank Zombo, he'll send it to me. Even though it's a sucky highlight, I want to see it. If I say, hey, Clay, you got that highlight from 1995 where Steve Bono threw that incomplete pass on second and 10 against the Cleveland Browns, September 27th, 1995, he'll say, yeah, I have it. He's got every freaking highlight of every game in the last 20 or something years. You don't hang on to every highlight of every game if you're not a fan. Who would want to be a fan of a, of a team and have all these highlights and create it? He lives Chiefs. Yeah. He bleeds Chiefs. He loves the team. He just wants them to persevere. And any any people say, well, Clay Wheeler slamming Patrick Mahomes. He's not slamming him. That's just how he feels his rookie season is going to be. Aaron Rodgers took the biggest heat when they ran, like I said, when they ran Brett Favre out of Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers took the biggest heat because they were 6-10. and 10. And where is Aaron Rodgers now? The greatest quarterback of this generation. All right, Clay, in closing, would you have anything you'd like to add to the Shaggy Shane followers? Going to my first Chiefs game since 2013, 49ers, week one, front row, 50-yard line to see our franchise quarterback. Yeah! I haven't been this excited since I was knee-high to Elvis Gerback. So. <laughs> Kick ass, baby! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Kansas City Chiefs freaks worldwide. That is the second annual Shaggy Shane Kansas City Chiefs prediction show. I'd love to thank my guest, Clay Wheeler of Red Tribe Cinema. See you all one week from tonight, and we will discuss the Chiefs Chargers in front of that 28,000 fan, rabbit fan base in L.A. as the Chiefs take it. I will see you guys in one week, Clay. Let me hear you say, go cheese, go cheese.